On this channel so far, we've covered the Big Tree Tech RRF as well as the Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3 board. Now, I've been a huge fan of these 32-bit boards because they are really inexpensive, they've been quite reliable for me, and they're basically drop-in replacements for most of the standard Creality printers out there. And Big Tree Tech does have a couple other boards I haven't tested out. They have the Turbo as well as the full-size SKR E3, I believe is what it's called, which are also awesome options I've heard from other people for converting various machines or even building your own kind of DIY printer. And although these boards are going to be perfect for the majority of printers and builds out there, what if you need more stepper motor inputs? Or what if you just need to be able to attach more peripherals to your main board? The largest sized Big Tree Tech board so far has allowed for up to six stepper motor drivers. And like I said a moment ago, six is plenty for the majority of printers or builds out there. But what if you want to build something like a tool changer? And another example is with the Voron and the popularity that they've come, they've gotten lately, the Voron 2.4 bill of materials calls for two of the SKR 1.4 boards. They're kind of ran in a piggyback configuration along with a Raspberry Pi for the Clipper firmware. And although that is definitely a viable option that's used by many, what if you could just have one board and you don't have to have two boards? And again, if you wanna build something like a tool changer, you can just have this single board that can take all of the stepper motors and all of the various inputs that you want. Well, Big Tree Tech recently released their Octopus board and sort of like the name implies, this board can take eight stepper motor drivers and seems to be aimed at these more complex builds that are gaining in popularity. And although you do need to add your own Palulu style drivers to this board, the base board itself goes for $45. At that price point, I am super excited to have this board as an option and I think that it's going to make it more accessible for people that want to build something like a tool changer or again, some of these more complex builds. So in today's video, we are going to unbox the Octopus. We're going to take a look at its uh, various inputs and go over its specs and maybe see if this is going to be a board that might make sense for a project that you're working on. I'm really excited to get into this because it is, again, unlike any board I've ever had in front of me. So without further ado, let's get right to today's video. The Octopus is without a doubt the largest single board I've ever had in front of me with a footprint of 160 by 100 millimeters or roughly six and a quarter inches by four inches. The microprocessor used is a 32-bit M4 Cortex chip and as far as supported firmwares, this board is going to be compatible with both Marlin as well as Clipper, making it a solid contender for those Voron builds. As far as interfacing goes, you can of course run this completely headless should you want to do so. It's also going to be compatible with Big Tree Tech's pretty large array of TFT or touchscreen uh, screens that they have available. And if you don't like those touchscreens, you are also more than capable of running the standard 12864 uh, kind of older style RepRap LCD screen. This board has a full-size USB port, a micro SD port, a USB-C port, as well as an Ethernet port that is said to be for future expansion, but honestly the sky is really the limit as far as connectivity goes. Depending on the stepper motor drivers you decide to use and your preference, this board allows them to be set in sort of your normal standard configuration, UART or even SPI mode. If you have TMC drivers that support StallGuard, you can easily set them up with sensorless homing. When doing some research on this board, I came across Ed's 3D Tech YouTube channel that has a ton of information and videos on the Octopus, covering everything from setting up sensorless homing to configuring Clipper on the board. I'll go ahead and place links in the video description over to his channel if you wanna take a look at these videos as I think they are definitely going to be a great source of information. Taking a look at inputs, there are six PWM ports that are going to be for fans and using jumpers, you can set them to be for five volts, 12 volts or 24 volt fans. So you have a lot of options there. There are five thermistor connections, four hot end connections, six end stop and two filament runout ports. You've also got a port for a BL touch, RGB LEDs, and an expansion to add Wi-Fi to this board through an ESP module. There are so many ports, I don't think I could possibly just rant them all off in one video. So I'll go ahead and place the sort of pinout that Big Tree Tech has is an overlay here if you wanna go ahead and pause the video. And I'll also place that in the description if you wanna go ahead and check that out in more detail. Unlike the SKR Mini, as well as the RRF board that I previously covered on the channel, they've got the stepper motor drivers embedded in the board while the Octopus actually has eight slots for Palulu style stepper motor drivers. And I think that on a board of this size, that really makes a lot of sense. In the years I've been printing, I've probably used 
hundreds if not thousands of different stepper motors with no exaggeration and I don't know that I've ever had an actual stepper motor fail on me, but I have had a couple of stepper motor drivers fail on me either from just overheating or maybe one was faulty or just it hit its end of life. And so the idea of not having eight stepper motor drivers embedded in this board I think makes a lot of sense because if for some reason one of them does die or you need to replace one, you don't have to completely rip out the board and replace the board. You can just remove very easily that stepper driver put a new one in and be back up and printing. With that being said, let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are or what your uh, uh, preference is. Do you prefer to have these stepper motor drivers embedded? Do you prefer to have removable Palulu style? Or kind of like I just stated, do you think that on the smaller boards like the SKR, it makes sense just to have them embedded while on something like the Octopus, you prefer to have them uh, removable or in that Palulu format? I would really like to know, uh, so let me know down below. Although it looks like things are still being added, there is now a GitHub repository for the Octopus board. Currently, there's some information on how to get this board working with Clipper, as well as various ways to power the Pi. A pre-compiled option for Clipper, as well as board-specific parameters to build your own Clipper firmware. From what I saw, it looks like they are still adding things for Marlin, and there's even a folder for RepRap firmware, which is blank, but makes me wonder if this is going to be added as a compatible firmware at some point. Through my scouring of the internet, I did find a PDF guide that goes over some things like wiring that I didn't see available on Big Tree Tech's official website. So I will go ahead and place a link to that in the description as well. Just really anything that I think is useful for this board that maybe will help you decide whether you want it or if you do have this board and you're just trying to figure out how to install the hardware or compile some sort of firmware, I'll place any and all links I've discovered uh, in the description of this video. This is certainly a unique board and the first of its type that has come across my desk and uh, doing some digging online, I do know that there are some other sort of similar larger form factor boards with a lot of inputs, but from the research that I did, this does seem to be the best value and the lowest price point out of the options that are out there. And I did state this earlier, but I d again do want to clarify that this board is going to be overkill for a lot of things and not something that you're going to need to convert a board just from like 8-bit to 32-bit. Most of the boards out here or the printers out here, whether they're Creality or Elegoo or Big Tree Tech or, you know, whatever there is, um, the standard small SKR mini boards or the, the um, uh, turbo boards or any of those boards are going to be more than sufficient. This really is targeted towards those more complex builds that just need to have all of those stepper motor inputs, like again, the Voron 2.4 or some kind of tool changer. I recently mentioned that I'm going to be building the Voron 0.1 and I will be using the recommended SKR Mini E3 board. I certainly could use the Octopus, but it doesn't make any sense and I plan on using that for a future project where I can actually take advantage of all of its capabilities. If all goes well with the Voron 0.1 build, which I am really hoping I get to start in the next couple of weeks here, I just have so many things happening. Um, the game plan would be to use the Octopus for a Voron 2.4 build. But in my head, based off of the things that are scheduled, it would definitely be a few months down the road, but I'd really like to use it because that's just a project that I see it definitely being targeted towards. And I would love to be able to provide feedback on just what was it like using this board? How difficult was it to get Clipper working with it? And you know, just overall what my experience was. So um, if you are interested, definitely stay tuned because that is my goal for this. And if you do have any questions on the Octopus board, um, let me know in the comments down below. I can certainly do my best to answer and um, I will go ahead and reach out to Big Tree Tech if I start to see that there's, hey, some repeat questions that I think you guys should um, either answer or implement in some sort of your documentation or over on the GitHub. But like I said, all of the things I discussed in this video, like the pinout, the YouTube channel with the information on compiling Clipper as well as the sensorless homing, uh, as well as that PDF guide will all be in the description of this video in hopes that it will be a nice little hub of uh, information and resources for anyone interested in this board. Based on my how to print with ABS video from a couple of weeks ago, I know there are a lot of you guys that are also interested in building a Voron. I don't know whether it's 0 0.1, 2.4, 1 point something or the original. I'm sorry, I primarily been looking at the 0 0.1 and 2.4, so I can't remember all of the names offhand right now, but um, if you are planning on building like the 2.4, 
and you are planning on using the Octopus, let me know in the comments down below, or if you actually are already using this, let me know as well. Um, I personally would love to hear some feedback on that, and I think that everybody else that's watching this video would probably feel the same way. So uh, on that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below over to the Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of my existing Patreon supporters. You guys are absolutely amazing. I appreciate each and every single one of you. And we've gotten quite a few new supporters as of lately. And uh, I know I say thank you at the end of every video, but I really want to reinstate that it truly does allow me to spend more time doing this and come back each and every single week. So I am incredibly appreciative of all of you guys. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.